up, folks? Today, we're discussing why exactly you should start studying for your amateur radio license today. If you already have your license, why you should study to start upgrading. So let's check it out today on K5ATA, Ham Radio. As we get started, y'all do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, share this with somebody. It helps other people find the information that we put out there, the content, and it helps the channel out. We do appreciate it. Okay, so why should you absolutely start studying for your ham radio license today? Well, there are a bunch of reasons. Some of them have been around forever. Some of them are kind of fresh in our mind. For example, people historically have taken communications and the ability to communicate, communicate with people for granted. We just always assume that you're going to always be able to pick up your phone, call somebody, and get through to them. And it's not until something drastic or something severe happens that we start to realize, uh-oh, maybe I should have had a plan. Right now, there are a few people thinking, you know, maybe I should have had a plan. People that had a plan for communications and stuff and kind of got prepared for some of this, got little labels from some people calling them nut jobs and whatnot. Well, the nut jobs, some of them anyway, are sitting in a little bit better position than the people who just always kind of assumed everything would just go along the way it is. Okay, and net, guess what? Some of those nut jobs even have toilet paper. Part of being prepared is having a communications plan. Now, I am not saying that everybody has to have a tactical communications protocol so that, you know, when the zombies come up your driveway, you have a means of, no, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, we're not saying that, you know, there's going to be a meteor hitting the earth and everything is going to go out. While that's possible, that's not the most feasible and most practical reason that people should be prepared. Okay, amateur radio serves a purpose that a lot of people don't really fully understand where it can come into, into play. So we're going to discuss some of those things today. All I'm saying is that you need to have some kind of a plan in place something there to communicate with people in case your phones don't work. Okay, so let's discuss some of the barriers or perceived barriers of getting into amateur radio. Yes, you have to take a test, but it's not as difficult as you think it is. And let's just be honest, a large percentage of the world in the United States is sheltering in place right now. We're hunkered down in our house, socially distancing ourselves from other people. We have time on our hands. This is a good time to do it. There are online resources um, there are apps for your phone. Right now, we're fortunate. The, the emergency that we're facing, the, the crisis around the world we're facing right now, is not impairing communication severely. Okay, yeah, there are some hospital lines getting cl clogged up with phones and stuff like that, but you can still pretty reliably pick up the phone, call your grandma, and talk to her and say, okay, grandma, you're good. Okay, but that's not to say that the next situation that comes up is not going to put us in that situation. So you might as well use some of this time now and get prepared for next time. So a lot of the resources out there are free. Some of them might cost a little bit of money. Some are better than others. Okay, and there are other videos out there and videos on, on my channel that discuss exactly how you can study for your ham radio license. You can go over to hamstudy.org and take a look at, at um, his content. You can go to the App Store or your Google Play Store, or whatever version you have, and download an app to study for your ham radio test. The important thing is that you actually start studying for it. Um, one of the advantages is it's not like school. It's not like work. You're at home. You can study in your pajamas. You can study in, you know, in whatever you want, wherever you want. You can study in the backyard while you're fishing. Um, I've had folks study in the deer stand while they were hunting. You know, you can study anywhere, study with that cup of coffee, and you kind of study at your own pace. You need to go to the bathroom? No problem. Pause study and go to the bathroom and come back. Okay? Um, it's not hard to get into, and radios don't have to be expensive either. You can get radios as cheap as 20 bucks, and yeah, I know there are a lot of folks out there who are prepared, and they have a crate full of Baofeng UV5R radios that they've you know, maybe turned on, not programmed, they have no idea how to use, that's not prepared. Okay, being prepared is actually not only having the communication system, 
but using it with enough regularity that you can use it when you have to. Okay, so you can get into ham radio for a very small amount of money, um, and then you can spend a fortune on it. It all depends on you and what you want to do. But you don't have to spend a fortune to have reliable communications. That's the important thing you need to make a note of. What ham radio does is it allows people to communicate around the world without relying on a network infrastructure. You don't have to rely on the internet, although there are ways of communicating that do use the internet, but we have other ways in place as well in case those ways don't work. You don't have to rely on phone networks. You don't have to rely on cable TV networks to get your news. You can pick up a microphone. You can you know, call out, talk to somebody down the road or around the world and find out what exactly is going on. You can get on the radio with ham radio with basically just a radio and a wire. You can take a radio um, with some sort of way to power it, throw a wire up in a tree, and you can work, work the world. You can talk to people you know, in England, you can talk to people around the world, you England people, you can talk to people in the States. Okay? But it doesn't take that much to get it going. Ham radio also has means in place where they can convey messages to other people. So if there is some kind of global issue and there's no communication, you can get in touch with a ham or, you know, if you are a ham, then you can do it for yourself and help other people. And you can start passing messages through the national traffic system. And people out there are actually out in the world trying to help deliver messages and get information for people. Um, so let's go through some of the very plausible and very realistic scenarios that can cause communications disruptions where ham radio comes in handy. First on the list, hurricanes. Okay, hurricanes happen all the time. They happen different times around the world. Some are bad, some are not so bad. Okay, believe it or not, you get 135 mile an hour winds blowing, things fall over. Some of those things that fall over may just be, you know, important communications equipment. Um, Hurricane Katrina, my parents were in Slidell, Louisiana, and they did not have reliable phone service. In fact, they had no phone service for a while. After the hurricane hit, I got on the ham radio, talked to somebody down there, and while I didn't talk to my parents, I did know that their area was not severely hit, and their area did not flood. Okay, so I was reasonably comforted that, you know what, my folks are okay, and I did that with ham radio. I couldn't get through to them on the phone. Because all I, you know, you've, you've all done it. You've called somebody during a crisis and, you know, I'm sorry, all circuits are busy. Please try again. Well, you try that four or five times and, you know, you start pulling your hair out. That's what happened here. Okay. But no, I didn't stop there. I went in the house, picked up the ham radio, and started making some calls. I got some folks. Some folks were nice enough that, you know, they passed me along. They got me on the air with somebody who was down in the New Orleans area and they were able to tell me that they knew definitively that that area did not flood. I was comforted. Earthquakes. I hate to break it to you but every time the earth kind of takes a good stretch and shakes around a little bit stuff's gonna fall over just like the um, hurricanes. And when stuff falls over it's never good. Okay, Antennas fall over, you know, cell phone towers, stuff like that. Um, Places in the world that are prepared for earthquakes, they are a little bit better prepared. You know, California, their building standards are a little bit different, and they can withstand some earthquakes. They can't withstand all of them. But then you go someplace that's never really had earthquakes, and all of a sudden they get their big one, and things fall over, boom, communications emergency. Oh, wait, guess what? My ham radio still works. Okay, no, your phone doesn't work, your landline doesn't work. Your TV doesn't work. You know, maybe your satellite dish works if you have direct TV or one of the satellite services. Okay. But I can get messages in and out using ham radio. Tornadoes. Okay. Another thing that happens, these tend to be a little bit more regionalized as far as where they happen. Okay. But the same thing. You get wind traveling at several hundred miles an hour. It's going to destroy some stuff. And some of that stuff it destroys are communication circuits. Okay. Um, having a ham radio, once again, gives you the ability to not just call in to find out if your people are okay, but it also gives hams the ability to call out for help. Okay, a lot of times those systems are completely down, completely, you know, what systems are left in place are completely overloaded, but a ham radio operator can call out and get messages out that we need help here. 
that's another way of being prepared for things in your area. You know, not so many years ago, people always said, oh, tsunamis, okay, not that big of a deal. Yeah. Then 2004 came along and a quarter of a million people in Indonesia died. Okay, now can you imagine being family from somebody who lived there, not able to find out whether or not your people were okay? Okay, a quarter million people. It was something like 262,000, so a little bit more than a quarter. Okay, that's a lot of people. I can guarantee you phone lines did not work there. The only way to get messages in and out are amateur radio operators. And amateur radio operators, when there's a communications emergency, we tend to step up and get the job done. We can deploy faster than most government agencies can, and we can start getting messages out. Now, am I saying we're here to replace government agencies? No, absolutely not. What I am saying is that we have the ability to help people when emergencies happen. So in situations like this, tsunami, where massive amounts of death are there, and communications are completely down okay the the next closest guy over there that's okay can start relaying information you know what areas are flooded what areas are not stuff like that very basic information that can start putting your mind at ease and also start communicating emergency needs to the government agencies and relief agencies that are coming to help yep this one feels awfully real right now okay there are sicknesses around the world and global pandemics and whatnot that can come around and start taking lives. Okay, Ham radio, while we're not exactly facing a communications emergency right now, we're sheltering in place and you know, like I said, you can still make a phone call. Ham radio provides a different source of, or a different sort of service. What ham radio does here, it gives people who are sheltering in place the ability to interact with other people. Okay people who are going stir crazy you can get on the radio and talk it's not that difficult so for all those people all those people who are you know stuck in the house with nothing to do and going crazy because there's no one to talk to ham radio is there you can get on there you can talk to people around the world you can talk to people up the street you can still hold your club meetings on the air you can do whatever it is that you want to do on the radio and be able to communicate with people all right another instance that communication systems can go down just general communications failures be it from you know solar flares or hackers or you know whatever it is that happens to take down a communication system you have a, a means that works you know if somehow or another you know some hacker goes and shuts down all of your phone services that's not that big of a deal for us we have a radio we can communicate with people okay Another thing that ham radio is useful for is getting news. Okay, now I know you're thinking, what do you mean? I can turn on, insert your favorite news channel here, and get the news. But believe it or not, and I know this is going to shock some of you, okay, but not all news is unbiased. Okay, in fact, I would argue that pretty much all news stations, or most of them, have some kind of spin that they put on the news. You don't necessarily hear the real accounts all the time of what's happening. But with ham radio you can't. With a radio like this, okay, this is a digital radio. You can communicate on digital voice and the way this works is this uses, it it combines radio with the internet and we're fortunate the internet still works so we can do this right now and I can communicate around the world. Okay, This radio is currently set on the worldwide talk group and people are on there just talking to each other all around the world. You want to know what things are like because of, you know, the human malware virus that's happening around the world? Turn on the radio and find out. We're going to turn this up for a second and see if we can hear a little bit of traffic about that. Yes, sir. The Gulf India 6 station, I'll get the rest of it on the next round. Uh, WB6DJN, Whiskey Bravo 6, Bravo, Japan, November. Good morning. Good afternoon to you. The name here is Mark, Mike, Alpha, Romeo, Kilowatt. Mark is my name. QTH, uh, the city of Modesto. And as you can hear, 
these folks are holding a conversation or a ham radio speak QSO on a DMR radio on the worldwide network. It's a gentleman in Modesto, California, and somebody in England, United Kingdom. There. Yeah, November. Call sign is Gulf India Six India Echo Sierra, and currently located on the east coast of North Ireland. So he's in Ireland. Okay, very good. Nice, uh, nice signal from the east coast of uh, Ireland. Uh, I imagine you're in the same position everybody else is all over the world, kind of in the uh, shelter in place. And here it is. People are discussing, you know, what's going on around the world, and you're getting that information straight from other people, not from, not from news channels. Ninety, about a watt here to a. Uh, to the local repeater, the local DMR repeater, uh, the Gopher Ridge repeater there. Uh, uh, there, go ahead. Yes, you all copied not DMR. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the other things that's just hit us. Uh, but two weeks ago, uh, we're currently in lockdown here. Uh, my QTH is uh, out in the country. So, like I said, you're able to pick up a radio, and I was just eavesdropping. I didn't call anybody for that. We just eavesdropped. You can do eavesdrop. You can do that, okay? And I was able to find out that you know what? In Ireland, they're in lockdown too. Now, believe it or not, now I don't know. I haven't checked Ireland. Sometimes you hear people aren't in lockdown and whatnot, but then when you actually talk to the people, you figure out exactly what's going on. Anything that's going on around the world, you can use your ham radio and get real-time information about them. And you don't have the problem of listening to three different news channels and getting five different spins on what's going on, and that spin constantly changing depending on, you know, the mood of who's sitting in, on the screen in front of you. Okay, ham radio is not all about doom and gloom and everything like that. Okay, ham radio is a great hobby. It's something you can get into. You can make great friends around the world. You can talk to people. Um, you can learn how to tinker with stuff. You can learn how to build antennas, build your own radios. Okay, it's a great fun hobby that you can get into and start practicing. It's got a practical side and an entertainment side. Ham radio tends to try to push the edge on what what exactly what technology you can use and how to best use the radio spectrum. You know, now I can send data. I can send an email around the world without ever using the internet. I can send that data purely off of radio waves. Okay, so if the internet does go down, boom, I've got that. And it's just a fun thing to learn about. Okay, amateur radio is great for making connections. I've made a lot of great friends with a lot of people that I have never met face to face. I've talked to them on the radio. Um, some of them we do, you know, YouTube things with and whatnot, but I've never shaking their hands and a lot of these these guys and I consider them to be friends you can make connections around the world and have entertainment you know during these times when you are sheltered in place you've got friends that you can talk to so what are some of the barriers that people are concerned with about amateur radio yes you do have to take a test and right now most tests are pretty much on hold because we can't gather in groups and this and that and the other okay but there is a light at the end of the tunnel there is a group of people who are actively working diligently to try to get remote online testing done. They've run their first session and actually issued a license um, that the FCC has, you know, issued that license. So it worked. Okay, but even if that doesn't roll out in time for this crisis that we have, you should still start studying for your radio license now. You, Like I said, you have the time, and as soon as you know, all these social distancing rules and stuff like that back off, you can go take your test. You know, you've got enough time, you can be ready for all three tests, really, if you wanted to be, okay? But certainly you can be ready for your technician exam or and possibly your technician and your general exam. Okay, so just to recap, why should you study and start working towards your ham radio license today? Because you can, okay? Like I said, we have the time right now. We have, you have the resources. They're out there. They're free. Okay. If you have questions about how something works, it's all over YouTube. You can start working towards that license. 
and be ready to go so that you're prepared the next time something like this goes down. Maybe, and if you already have your license, go ahead and start studying for, the, for an upgrade. If you already have your license and maybe you're all the way at the top, try something new. You know, build a new antenna, learn a digital mode, something like that, something that you haven't done. The point is, use this time now, this time that we are in crisis, to take advantage of the situation and get better and better prepared for next time. All right, so like I said, guys, that's it. If you would, hit like, hit subscribe, share this with somebody. We do appreciate it. Y'all take care, and we'll see you on the air. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Email me. I'm open to answer.